Hello, right, today we're going to show you something interesting. We're going to show you how to turn 19 kilos of 6,000 series aluminium into 1.68 kilos of alternator bracket for your OM606. Follow me. Showing you this is nearly 20 kilos of aluminium and we're turning it into 1.6 as we've just shown. And this is the machine that's going to do it. And Jonathan, being the expert, is going to explain a few details about it. And first of all, we're going to show how this goes. Well, we're not going to show, but we're going to tell you how it goes. In. So, where do we mount this and what do we mount it to? So, this mounts in the centric vice, which is then mounted to the fourth axis. And then we just obviously tighten it up, and then we're on tooth jaws, which are gripping on three millimeters, which gives us plenty of space to get the part in. Yeah. So, like Jonathan said, the jaws have got little spikes, like teeth, that bite into the aluminium, and it stops the aluminium being able to get ripped out because this has just a, a monstrous amount of power to be able to tear that aluminium off. What sort of power are we talking? Thirty three horsepower. Thirty three horsepower, which yeah, as you can imagine, through a steel cutter. A it's a lot more than a cordless. Right, um, and this fourth axis, as you're going to see from the video, is able to rotate that part to be able to get to the different angles. And this is technically operation one. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, because it's got a fourth axis, this can rotate um, and it allows us to get to every single side, but very, very accurate. So if the machine didn't have a fourth axis, we'd be having to turn the bot to get to that side, to get to that side, to get to that side. But that particular device is going to do that. And once it's done all that, it then goes into this vice, and this piece that's left that the vice is holding onto is then removed with a an XDKT, which you have another name for it. It's a square shoulder face mill running aluminium inserts from WNT. Yes. And what sort of speed do we spin that at then? So in aluminium, this runs at about 6,000 revs. Um, and the machine's capable of? 10. 10,000 10, RPM. And why don't we run it at 10,000? Uh, because if we run much faster than six, aluminium basically will melt into the tool and this will become all welded and blocked up with aluminium. Cool. And these little inserts that you call them, how long do they last? Uh, so they've they've done uh, 15 of these components so far and they're probably good for another five. Wow. So about yeah. 20. That is good. And uh, yeah, that's what they look like. That's what a brand new insert looks like. And on average, just for the interest of the viewers, what would an insert like that cost? Uh, between six and 12 pounds, depending on the grade. Yeah. And how much um, steel or aluminium you cutting. Yeah. So that's a little brief insight into one of the tools that's used and we'll show that tool being used as it literally just destroys that piece of oak well, doesn't destroy it. It destroys what we don't want, it makes shiny what we do want. Um, but there are a lot more than that one tool that obviously creates this job. Um, how many tools does it take to do both of these? 18. Operations? 18. So this machine, as you can see, has a large rotary tool changer. Um, which can hold a total of 30 tools. Yeah. And uh, we're using 18 of them just for this particular job. So inside the machine now, and you can see, this is the arrangement of tools. And we've got all sorts. We've got taps, countersinks, drills, more taps. That great big one up there is called a U-drill, which is basically a big drill. That one there, which is very important, and I'll zoom in which is the measuring probe, and that allows us to accurately uh, set jobs. All sorts, and that's where the 30 tools are kept, inside the machine. We'll show one of them being pulled out.
And there we go. It's all changed complete. So do you want to see what it looks like coming out the other side? Right, follow me. Right, so <clears throat> at this end of the machine, this thing is called a swarf conveyor. And two large screws inside the machine pick up all that cut aluminium, send it up this conveyor belt, and then it, it very kindly drops it into this great big drum for us, this bucket, so that we can take it outside and send it to, uh, to be recycled. All the material that we aren't using, literally, um, gets turned back into new material. Nothing gets wasted in this industry. talk about why we've even made it. Well, on the OM606, the alternator is normally mounted here on this original alternator bracket, which is quite low down. Um, and in things like Land Rover Defenders and other vehicles like that, the power steering box on the right-hand drive models is right here where the alternator needs to be. So this was primarily designed for use on the Land Rover Defenders. Uh, there were other brackets on the market that were fabricated. Um, but they're a bit flexible and kind of crappy. So we literally decided to make one out of a billet. Aluminium, same as the cylinder head, so similar contraction expansion. Obviously it's not the same grade, but it's aluminium. It's not a flat plate of steel. And it holds it in a really rigid format because obviously we've got a nice angular section. It's holding it side to side at that angle and it's holding it forwards and back at that. So we've got a really nice stiff fitment. So if you've got a vehicle, there are other models out there that need this, this is absolutely fantastic. But something worth noting, if you are going to use a high mount alternator bracket like this, you've got to consider your turbo choice. Because obviously if you're going to have a massive turbo here, like on one of our billet manifolds or whatever, it's going to be too far forward and hit the alternator. So generally this thing's designed for use with the hybrid turbos and the stock turbos, the same as any other alternator high mount kit on the market. So yeah, that's what it's for. Now let's get into how to make it. Come on then. Right, so you're probably watching this and thinking, well, I'd quite like to make a bracket for my car or for something that I'm building. And how do you go from, you know, nothing and a block of aluminium to something like that? Okay. Well, so you go from the model, which we've got here, to, which is CAD, to a cam package. Now the cam package is the go-between from the computer to the machine which is going to tell it the tool paths and all the other bits and pieces which is kind of like a road map of instructions for that machine to follow. So do you want to show us some bits and tell us about the complexity of that? And Yep, so this is his part. So I've taken the model from Fusion and popped it into Hypermill. Uh, I then set a datum point so on this particular part, that has to be the center of rotation. So on the fourth axis, uh, which we showed you a little bit earlier, that is where the part rotates around. Um, and that is about that point. So that is like a, a, a point on a graph is the best way I can describe it. Um, we've then got all the tool paths here. And these are all doing different things. So what, tell us what the different colors represent then. So the yellow tool paths are feed rates. So that's when you're on cut. So that's when the machine should be cutting metal. When it's red, it's a rapid tool path, so that means the machine's traveling as fast as it can and it shouldn't be cutting metal, it should be traveling in fresh air. Right, right, okay. okay. So all these, all these paths here, that is all just to rough the part out, and just to get rid of most of the metal. So that 20 kilos that we were talking about initially, that's basically, yeah, Probably that's nine, all the... 90% of that is done in this first bit. Yeah. We yeah. then go into finishing. And those finishing cycles, it's obviously a lot less lines on there, but it's a lot slower because we're running at nice feed rates, slow feed rates. Which is what gets us these nice patterns and the nice shine that we see, which is very important. So if we didn't do that, if we just went straight in with the high speed with the roughing... Um, it'd look like a 1990s computer pixelated, is the yeah. best way I can describe it. Rough, yeah, yeah, yeah. You might be able to see that in the time lapse because you can actually see step by step how it's actually gone through that, which is interesting. So, um, how much information is there there then that we're going to pass over onto the machine? Uh, so once we put that into code, it works out roughly 68,000 lines of code. 68,000 lines of code. Yes. 
So that is literally like AA route planner and 68,000 directions of going left, going right. And yeah, very complicated. So you're not gonna be able to remember that. So that then all goes onto a USB stick. Yeah, we do it by USB. You can do it by network, but we do it by USB. Okay, let's go and have a look at that then. So this is the USB stick. Just a basic, what size did you say it was? It's a four gig. Four gig, okay. Pretty small, I think, in the USB world these days. And then that's the program from the computer on the machine ready for it to read and cut the part. Right. Brilliant. So, as soon as you've got that in, it's a case of pressing go and away it goes, or is it a bit more complicated? As long as your tools are all set and your datings are all set. Yeah. And you're confident that you've done everything right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I always see a little bit of tweaking going on, but yeah, that's the joys that you're going to have to find out if you're going to make one of these parts. So yeah, I think that pretty much shows it from the, uh, from the start to the finish and the product fitted on the engine. Thanks for watching. See what we've got next time.